All right, I see our numbers are ticking up, but I want to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to our Women in Nutrition webinar. Um, we appreciate you taking time to fit us in. Um, a quick household item before we get started, we want to make sure that you know we're recording this session and we'll make it available to attendees following um, the webinar today. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. We'll do our best to answer those during our time together. Um, and I guess I should start with introductions. So my name is Jackie Londo. I am the Senior Go Red for Women Director here at the American Heart Association. Um, our local Twin Cities office is based in Egan, and I'm joined here by my colleague, Sarah Sanchez. She's our Community Impact Director. Um, our contact information is listed here on this slide in case you wanna follow up with us at any time. Uh, many of you are probably at least somewhat familiar with the American Heart Association, but as a refresher, we were founded in 1924 by a group of six cardiologists who believe that scientific research could lead to um, a better way of treatment, prevention, and ultimately a cure for heart disease, which is America's number one killer. Um, for nearly 100 years since 1924, um, the Heart Association has been a relentless force for a world of longer healthier lives. We are dedicated to ensuring equitable health for all communities through collaboration with numerous organizations and powered by millions of volunteers, probably some of you on the call today, we fund innovative research, advocate for public health and share life-saving resources. Um, so today is a women and nutrition webinar. One of the specific ways that we do our work at the Heart Association is through our Go Red for Women campaign which is about to turn 20 years old in 2024. So in 2004, Go Red um, Signature Initiative was um, created to raise awareness that heart disease is also a women's greatest health threat um, and to empower women to take action to lower their risk of heart disease and stroke. Cardiovascular disease, disease continues to be the number one killer of women. Um, this fact always shocks me. It claims more lives than all forms of cancer combined. The reality is that nearly 45% of women over the age of just 20 are living with some form of cardiovascular disease, and that women also experience really unique life stages that put them at increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease over the course of their lifetime. Because Go Red for Women um, has made great strides in terms of awareness, we're super excited to um, share that heart disease is more commonly known as women's greatest health threat, but it is, um, it's, it's also preventable most of the time. So women can control some of their risk factors such as blood pressure, smoking, cholesterol, and lack of regular physical activity, but there's still uncontrollable factors such as age. Like I talked about gender, women are um, go through unique stages of life. Family history can also increase our risk. So we'll talk about some of those factors throughout today's webinar, but Go Red for Women, like I said, works with our community to educate women on lowering their risk and raise awareness through events like our annual Go Red for Women Evening of Empowerment, National Wear Red Day, um, mark your calendar for the first Friday in February, National Wear Red Day, and our Minnesota Women of Impact program. Um, these initiatives go, our Go Red for Women initiatives go far beyond just those three events. Go Red really focuses on improving healthy eating choices and blood pressure, controlling blood pressure rates while reducing the number of deaths that all women, especially under-resourced communities that are at higher risks. Um, as an AHA employee, I am, <clears throat> excuse me, surrounded by these facts and stats every day, but I know that as a wife, a mother, as a woman, prioritizing my own health and well-being can sometimes be pretty far down on my to-do list. I try to walk my daughter to daycare each morning to get in a few miles of exercise. I try to make my family healthy meals, but all of the other tasks on my to-do list often get in the way. So I wanna invite my colleague, Sarah, to share, sh share some of the ways that we can take care of ourselves, not only as women, um, but take care of our families, that men can take care of themselves, including our most recent nutrition guidelines and advice for well-rounded health. Um, Sarah will share some of the work that we're doing in the community, specific to nutrition security um, and ways you can get involved. So Sarah, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome, thanks again, Jackie. And um, again, I'm Sarah Sanchez, the Community Impact Director here in our local Twin Cities office. And like Jackie mentioned, I'm gonna go over actionable ways to approach nutrition and um, overall health. 
and let's get started with a quick overview of Life's Essential 8. And a fun fact, it was actually Life's Essential 7 until just recently where we added another measure, which I will let you know which one that is. But these are a key set of measures from the American Heart Association for improving and maintaining cardiovascular health. So this is, of course, including diet and nutrition, which I'll cover more in depth, but it's a little broader than that. So we know that better cardiovascular health helps lower the risk for heart disease, stroke, and other major health issues. And Life's Essential Aid is a way to simplify all of that information so that people can better understand and manage it in a digestible way. So let's dig into uh, a bit of each of those eight areas before we get more into healthy eating. So the first area, and like I said, the one we'll cover most today is eat better. So you want to aim for an overall healthy eating pattern that includes whole foods, lots of fruits and vegetables, lean protein, nuts, seeds, cooking, and cooking in non-tropical oils such as olive and canola. And make smart choices and swap to build on your overall healthy eating lifestyle. Watch calories, eat small portions. And again, we'll discuss more of what this looks like um, as far as eating, but we'll just quickly review the other seven essentials first. So next we're gonna move over to physical activity. So the recommendation currently is that adults were getting two and a half hours of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous physical activity per week. And then um, our kiddos should have 60 minutes every day, including play and structured activity. And ideally, this would include muscle strengthening activities like resistance or weight training at least twice a week. This is really important for women um, as we get older and go through menopause where um, our bone density is decreasing naturally. So that weight resistance is another way to help with that. And my favorite way to go about getting that physical activity requirement is add it up. So I try to take a walk at work or in the neighborhood when the weather cooperates on a beautiful day like today, or if not, um, a few laps around the office. And if I'm on a call like this where I can listen and watch with a bit of movement, I'll try to do that. And um, you know, I'm trying to be a really good example to my two-year-old so that she can see me being more active so I can set an example for her. From there, we move on to quitting tobacco. So that is any use of an inhaled nicotine delivery product. Um, so that's commercial cigarettes, e-cigarettes and vaping. These products are the leading cause of preventable death in the United States, including about a third of deaths from heart disease. So this is an important one for us. And um, currently about a third of US children ages 311, 3 to 11 are exposed to secondhand smoke or vaping. So if you're already smoking, make a plan to quit include those who are ready to support you and know that you're more likely to quit for good if you prepare a plan that fits your lifestyle and again, have people ready to support you to get through them. And lastly, on the top of our essentials circle, we have get healthy sleep, which um, I said we would let you know, this is the newest one that's been added. And again, a lot easier to say than do, but it's very important for our health. So most adults need seven to nine hours of sleep each night with children requiring more. And then that number goes down as they get a little bit older. Getting a good night's sleep promotes healing for your body, improves our brain function, and then reduces the risk for chronic diseases. Studies show also that too little or too much disease, or sorry, not disease, sleep is associated with heart disease. So there really is that balance there for adults between the seven to nine hours. Moving down on the remaining four in those essential eight, we have the key health factors, starting with managing weight and understanding how many calories you take in and your activity level can help you identify the changes that you really need to make around weight. Um, to lose weight, you need to burn more calories than you eat. It always sounds so much easier said than done. So keeping track of what and how much you're eating really can help you know whether you're eating out of habit, stress, boredom, instead of actually being hungry. Uh, I know personally, I tend to be a late night snacker and it's not about being hungry as much as it is just a habit or being bored um, after I've had my last meal and we're getting into the late night hours. So noticing this has given me insight and in response, I have a plan. So if I'm looking to grab a snack or something sweet candy at the end of the night, 
um, I will go for peppermint tea or a chai tea instead. And in the moment, it feels like a swap, you know, maybe I'm not that excited about, but really I have um, that, that craving satisfied and I'm feeling good and it's healthier for me. So that one small change is manageable. And that's really what we're talking about, making little changes that make sense to you and that you can keep up with. Um, but also important to note that if you aren't losing successful, losing weight successfully on your own and you feel like you're doing what you need to do, make sure to talk to your healthcare professional. Next, we have control cholesterol. So high levels of non-HDL or that bad cholesterol can lead to heart disease. Um, your, heart, your healthcare professional can do measurements for you to help you understand what those levels mean. And tracking the, your cholesterol levels levels over time and taking steps to reducing that are really important. Um, but there's many other factors that come into play. So physical activity, eating a healthy diet, avoiding tobacco, these are all things that um, are important in managing cholesterol, which is, uh, again, why this is really a, a well-rounded circle of things. They're all interacting and, and uh, related as far as overall health. Next, we have managing blood sugar. So most of the food we eat, especially carbohydrates and sugars, turn into glucose in our stomachs, and then that can enter into the bloodstream and our bodies use it as energy. But over time, high levels of blood sugar can damage your heart, your kidneys, your eyes, your nerves, and healthcare professionals, same with cholesterol, can help you take your blood glucose readings and provide recommendations. And if you are diagnosed with type two diabetes, you would need to regularly monitor and um, take care of your blood sugar levels. And then rounding us out on the last of the our essentials eight, we have managing blood pressure, which is so important. It's something that we're really passionate about at the AHA, as you can imagine, but keeping your blood pressure when, within acceptable ranges can keep you healthier longer. Levels less than 120 over 80 are optimal. High blood pressure is defined as 130 to 139 systolic, or that top number in a blood pressure reading, or 80 to 89 diastolic, which is that bottom number. And a diagnosis of high blood pressure must be confirmed with a medical professional or doctor, and should always be evaluated um, any, or always evaluate any unusually low blood pressure readings as well, because that could also signify something. Just to recap, uh, Life's Essential Eight really is about improving overall well-being with, you know, these eight, um, eight little areas and, and factors that we can control. And each of the factors we discussed are important, but if we can make changes and improvements, even small ones, it really will impact everything on that circle overall. So if you are interested in taking the My Life Check quiz, which is associated with Life's Essential Eight and can give you a, a snapshot of where you may be right now with your health with a numerical number. Um, Jackie will put that link into the chat. And then you also can find fact sheets, articles, recipes, more information on Life's Essential 8, dig into one of those areas. Um, that link is also in the chat and the resources for uh, Life's Essential 8 are currently available in English and Spanish, um, so that's helpful. And remember, again, talk to your provider. They can accommodate your unique health needs and support you safely in lifestyle changes, which is important. So now let's dig a bit deeper into healthy eating and nutrition. But before we do, I have a quick true or false for you. So enter your answer in the chat. True or false, when it comes to getting your fruits and veggies, fresh is always best. All right, I'm gonna, all right, we can go to the next slide. False is the answer here. So a healthy diet can include fresh, frozen, canned, or dried produce. Um, I know I love Minnesota sweet corn and root vegetables from around this time of year, but in the middle of January, I also know that picking up a bag of frozen corn or pre-cut butternut squash is going to make something just as satisfying and equally as nutritious as something I pick up from the farmer's market or fresh produce. It can also be convenient and include less prep. So if that's the option you'll follow through with, um, that's going to be the best one that works with you and help you stay consistent. So in 2019, 
the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology released new healthy eating guidelines that moved away from a restrictive dietary approach of um, staying in between this and this and make sure you don't get too much of this and really started to encourage a comprehensive approach to making heart healthy choices. So a healthy diet and lifestyle are your best weapons to fight cardiovascular disease. That's the whole point and that's what we're talking about. But it's really not hard if, again, if we make the small changes and we think about the overall eating patterns and choices that we're making. So when you start with that one healthy swap and you're ready, build on, so we suggest eating an overall healthy dietary pattern. So these are the, the key things that they're saying, the American Heart Association is saying to um, eat healthily. Eat a wider variety of fruits and vegetables. Choose fiber-rich whole grains for most of your grain servings. Add fish to your diet twice a week. Choose fat-free or lower dairy, low-fat dairy products. Cut back on beverages and foods with added sugars. Avoid foods with hydrogenated oils. Choose foods with less sodium and then limit or preferably um, no alcohol intake. So I want to emphasize again that you can eat a healthy diet without Go, eat a healthy diet without diet change. Go for a simple, no fat, healthy eating pattern to nourish your body. Concentrate on smaller portions rather than forcing yourself to eliminate foods that you love. Add fiber rich foods that keep you feeling full, such as whole grains, legumes, vegetables, and fruits. Include complex carbs that are fiber rich and that can help in controlling your blood sugar, like we talked about. And then be careful that we're not buying empty calorie foods and sugary drinks. And if they aren't in your pantry, you're just less likely to go reach for those. So I love this image here on the left, uh, which is part of a larger infographic that we use in talking about healthy eating. But eat the rainbow. It's a really good thing to keep in mind when you're building your plate. The more vibrancy, the colors, the variety of colors on your plate, the better. All of those colors indicate um, different nutrients in the fruits and vegetables that you're eating. Here we have examples of superfoods. These foods alone, um, you know, it, it sounds like a kind of a one fix option, but the foods alone make you healthier, but adding these nutritious foods to an already balanced diet can really bring some health benefits. We have beans and legumes, um, very economical and a plant-based based source of protein. They're full of fiber, magnesium, we have berries that contain high levels of flavonoids and can help to lower heart attack, heart attack risk in women, super important. Dark leafy greens, they're packed with nutrients and fiber and they're really low in calorie and carbohydrates. Nuts and seeds, um, again, a really good source of protein and fiber and unsaturated fats, but important here with nuts and seeds that you wanna go um, for the unsalted versions and we can talk, we'll talk a bit more about that. Oats, which are a great source of dietary fiber and can lower your risk for heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Uh, pumpkin, very popular right now, provides fiber, potassium, and vitamin A. And as we discussed before, canned is as convenient and nutrient dense of a choice, but it's important to make sure that you get plain pureed pumpkin and not the pie filling, which actually contains quite a big bit of sugar, as you can imagine. Um, then we have salmon, really healthy protein, provides tons of omega-3 fatty acids, skinless poultry, which is usually leaner than beef, um, but really great for grilling, roasting, or baking. And then yogurt, which provides calcium, protein, and vitamin D. Uh, best options are low-fat or fat-free, but I would say that with the caveat to always look at added sugar amounts on lower-fat yogurt options. Um, often the added sugar is part of making it uh, taste a certain way and replicating a full fat yogurt. Um, and that's a hard trade-off. You don't want all that added sugar. So make sure to check that out. For many of us, uh, suggested portions are probably a lot smaller than we expect. And we all know that we live in a society that overserves food, especially in restaurants with quantities that you know we can eat and then potentially are two or three separate meals. So serving Serving goals to keep in mind when you're planning your meals um, for fruits and veggies, you want to aim for four to five servings a day, which what counts as a serving. Um, so for fruit, a medium-sized fruit, half cup of fresh, frozen or canned, 
quarter cup of dried or half a cup or a half a cup of 100% fruit juice with again, no added sugars. Um, for vegetables, that's one cup of raw leafy vegetables, half cup of frozen fresh or canned, or a half cup of that uh, vegetable juice. And again, uh, not something you might not expect, but added sugars can be put in vegetable juice too. So always be on the lookout for that. And then meat, um, three ounces of cooked meat or poultry, which is about the size of a deck of cards or around the palm of your hand. And then beans and legumes, um, you wanna aim for a half cup cooked, dairy, one cup low fat, fat free or six ounces of low fat yogurt. So there are a lot of conflicting messages about processed food um, and what it means to eat healthy. So most of the food that we eat today has been processed in some way, um, even the salad mixes and frozen dinners. And some processed foods have ingredients that are um, added. Some are fortified with nutrients, some are prepared for convenience and making sure that they last longer on the shelf. Um, and it's important to know that even foods labeled natural or, or organic can also be highly processed. You have to really look at what um, is in the ingredients and what's in front of you. And eating a balanced diet doesn't mean that you have to make everything from scratch. It's just important to remember that when you're picking out food, read the labels, check for sodium, check for that added sugar, and check for fat content. And then that's just when we're preparing our own food, right? So make choices, smart choices when you're eating out. Um, choose restaurants where food is cooked to order or there's a designated healthier menu option th that you're interested in. And communication is key. Don't be afraid to ask how the food is prepared, what, made, what items are made to order versus in-house or prepackaged. You can make substitutions, request sauces or dressing condiments on the side so that you are in control of how much is added. And again, don't be afraid to ask. So now let's look at the nutrition label. So when you look at the label, start with serving information. So that bag of chips that says it's 140 calories, great, but a serving size may be only nine of those chips. So you gotta be paying attention to it. Um, and once you know your serving size, you can decide if the calorie content is reasonable for the amount that you're gonna eat or, um, and what it would look like if you ate that much. So a pint of ice cream, one serving is 240 calories. Now I've had half the container and I'm up to 480. So really just look before you dig in um, to help keep a realistic grasp on what you're consuming and how many calories you do want to consume. And check key nutrients and understand what you are looking for. Um, we were talking about fats, but not all fats are bad. And total sugars can include natural sugars, which again, um, aren't bad and aren't bad the way added sugars are. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're eliminating amount of added sugars, saturated fat and sodium. And then when you can avoid trans fat. So when choosing among different brands um, or similar product, products, compare those labels and then choose the foods with the least amount of these nutrients when possible. And you do wanna make sure that you get enough of the nutrients that your body does need, such as calcium, choline, dietary fiber, iron, magnesium, potassium, and vitamins A, C, D, and E. So make sure to check on the label about how much of those are included. And then understand that the daily value, or the percentage daily value, DV, um, tells you how much nutrient is in that single serving. Again, not the whole package, but it depends on the serving size. So in terms of daily recommended amount, um, if you wanna consume less of a nutrient, so say you want less sodium in your diet, you wanna choose a product, a food product with a lower percentage daily value of five. So 5% 5 or less if it's something that you're trying to consume less of. If you want more of a nutrient such as fiber, you want to choose a food that has a percentage daily value of 20% or more. So things you're avoiding, 5% or less, things that you want, daily value 20% or more. And you'll also want to avoid getting caught in marketing trap. Um, companies love to put low fat, reduce sodium, or sugar-free on the packaging. But again, this is sometimes a little misleading. Um, for example, reduced sodium, it's only telling you that the food has 25% less sodium than the original manufactured item. So maybe the original soup, um, can of soup has a thousand milligrams of sodium, 
now it has 750 milligrams. And that may be better, but it's probably not the best option. And always, always check sodium content of an item, especially if it claims it's free of some other nutrient. Oftentimes companies will add salt to make up for the lost flavor, similar to adding um, sugar to make up for reducing fat content. It can also be important to know that food labels aren't actually required to list every ingredient. Um, if the product only contains trace amounts, the company is not required to identify it. And in and itself might be a good reason to choose foods that are less processed or exposed to less additive. If you don't know what an ingredient is, don't hesitate to look it up. We all have phones on us at any moment, and this might help change your selection as well. So let's talk about fats a bit more. Um, probably one of the most commonly misunderstood nutrients. They're essential to the function of our body, but we have to be sure that we're choosing the right one. Ideally, we want to consume fats that are unsaturated. So these are the fats that we find in olive oil, avocado, nuts, oily fish like salmon. Saturated and trans fats are the ones that we want to limit. So those include butter, heavy cream, fatty meats, and hydrogenated oils. Omega-3 fatty acids benefit everyone's heart health. And research has shown that omega-3 fatty acids decrease risk of arrhythmias, which um, is another word for an abnormal heartbeat, and can lead to a sudden, which can lead to a sudden death. And they also decrease triglyceride levels, slow growth rate of atherosclerotic plaque, and can slightly lower blood pressure. Look for ways to incorporate more omega-3s into your diet. And then transitioning away from saturated and trans fats can really open up a new world of flavor. Um, there's some healthier, trans trans healthier alternatives to traditional solid oils like butter or lard, including olive oil, safflower oil, or different blends of these, um, commonly referred to as vegetable oils. So you may find some have distinct flavors that you like, some that you don't, some that you like in certain dishes. So experiment with that. Um, and you may have one or more type in your pantry at the same time. So in general, choose oils that have less than four grams of saturated fat per tablespoon and no partially hydrogenated oils or trans fat, preferably. Okay, and we can go to the next slide. When we talk about sugar, uh, there are two kinds and we talk about it a lot. Naturally occurring sugar, um, like you find it in apple or um, strawberries, berries, or added sugars like you'd find in ice cream. And the major sources of added sugar in American diets currently really comes from soft drinks, candy, cakes, pies, fruit drinks, um, like fruit aids or juice, dairy desserts, milk products, um, sweetened yogurt, sweetened milk, and sugary cereals. So unfortunately, you can't tell easily by looking at the nutrition facts panel of a food if it contains added sugar. Um, the line for sugar includes both added and naturally occurring on some. Um, and now thankfully we're getting closer or more, more often we have a line for added sugar. Um, so make sure that you're looking at that. And then any product that contains milk or fruit contains some natural sugar. So keep that in mind if for some reason you're looking to omit completely. Um, but again, those are healthy options. So natural sugars are okay. But reading the ingredient list on a processed food label can tell you if it contains those added sugars. So I see a lot in this in marketing for, for its children. Um, my kiddos too, and when I shop for her, I've learned that added sugars are just as, if not more prevalent um, in the foods that are marketed to our little ones. Uh, the packets of yogurt or pureed fruits that you can um, twist the top off and they'll eat right from that. So surprised to see how much added sugar is in those, considering there's so much natural sugar already from the fruits and great nutrients. Um, so make sure that you check, even if it's uh, marketed towards kids or seems healthy, always have eyes on the label. Most of our sugar consumption comes from deceptive drinks, um, sugary breakfast foods, and then also syrups that we can put into our coffee. Um, and it's delicious, but so many foods are laden with sugar. So what are we actually aiming for with sugar consumption? The AHA's current recommendation is for women and children 
that you consume no more than six teaspoons of added sugar per day, and then men are allowed up to nine teaspoons. What you might notice when you are looking at a label is that the sugar content is actually listed in grams. So it's good to know the math on that. Um, four grams of sugar are in a teaspoon. So one sugar cube is four grams of sugar. Um, so if you do the math divided by four, you can mentally think of how many grams or sugar cubes are in this. And often the visualization of that um, is kind of impactful. So the next time you find yourself looking at a label, I, I challenge you to calculate how many teaspoons of sugar are in a serving of what you're looking at, and you may be surprised at those results. So as you elevate your intake and try to reduce sugar consumption, um, don't stress yourself out. No one's asking anyone to banish sweets. You want to do things by taking a smaller portion, um, and that can make a positive impact right off the start. Another way to cut uh, sugar from your diet is start with those sugary drinks. Um, start with soda or drink or juices and drink more water. Drink water is not part of the essential eight, but it's definitely a part of eating healthy. Um, and I want to call that out. Always be hydrating and don't hesitate to add fruit and make it more interesting if it's not something that you're often reaching for. I'm a big fan of infused water, especially in the summer, um, either sparkling or, or tap or still. So additionally, uh, there's a lot of seasonings and extracts that you can use to enhance flavor and make things sweeter. Um, cinnamon or vanilla extracts are great in the kitchen while baking, swapping unsweetened applesauce for refined sugar. It's really about um, experiencing and finding out what works for you and your palate and make the changes gradually. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing process. As you reduce the amount of sugar you consume, your taste may adjust over time. And then those cravings can be less frequent or it would take a smaller amount of a sweet item to satisfy you. And if we're talking heart health, we cannot forget about sodium. On average, Americans consume about 3,400 milligrams of sodium per day. The AHA recommended amount is consuming no more than 1,500 milligrams a day. So high sodium intake can result in various health impacts, but an important one that we'll talk about is hypertension or high blood pressure. High blood pressure, it really has so few symptoms. It's often called the silent killer because it doesn't, it doesn't tell you, you don't feel it in your body until often um, it can be at a dangerous or deadly level, and that is high blood pressure maintained over a period of time. Lowering sodium intake really is often the first step in lowering your blood pressure numbers and reaching blood pressure control, but it is always important that you consult a provider who can assist with diagnosis and treatment. Sodium intake is the area I would say that I'm always working on in my eating habits. I grew up in a family that loved the salt shaker. Um, and it has taken me years to adjust my cooking and my, my own palate and find ways to season without so much salt. Um, I would say seasoning mixes that have a lot of salt-free flavor is a great payoff to getting flavor without so much of that sodium. So the AHA has identified six major culprits in the American diet that contribute to overconsumption of sodium. These are breads, lunch meats or cured meats, pizza, sandwiches, soup, and tacos. They really all can have excessive amounts of sodium. So overall, more than 70% of the sodium we eat comes from that process, prepackaged and restaurant food. It's already difficult to limit sodium when it's been added before um, it's purchased and brought home. So again, going for less processed foods and making more of your meals at home plus comparing those nutrition labels when you're shopping are all great ways to help control the sodium. So I mentioned a few already, but here are some simple ingredient swaps that don't sacrifice flavor, but can benefit your health. So instead of oil in your baked goods, try using unsweetened applesauce or mashed avocado. Um, instead of white pasta, try spaghetti squash or spiralized zucchini. You can use mayonnaise on your sandwich or swap the mayonnaise on your sandwich or in a tuna salad for smashed avocado. Um, instead of reaching for ice cream, keep bananas in the freezer and put them in a blender for a sweet treat. You can always add a little bit of cocoa powder too to make a little chocolate banana mix. 
instead of potato chips. Try a handful of unsalted almonds. Again, important they're unsalted. And then swap white rice for brown rice or quinoa, which contains more nutrients. And a few reminders on making healthy lifestyle changes. These things don't happen overnight. We've all spent years developing patterns and habits that impact your health, like me with the salt. And it takes time to break and change those behaviors. So if you're trying to change the way you eat or how active you are, whatever it is, be patient with yourself and set goals that are smart. Smart is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time sensitive. So break those big goals up into smaller milestones so you can celebrate things along the way. Going in all at once is a really good way to feel defeated if you make a mistake and can cause you to abandon the goal altogether. And really, this is consistency, small changes, keeping at it for the long run for your health. And knowing your cholesterol and your blood pressure and your blood sugar numbers is very important. Um, if you don't know what your base level is, go to your doctor, find out, and then work with them to come up with a plan if those are elevated or um, you're seeing something that you don't want to see. Having a baseline for where you are really is a key to understanding where you want to be or where you need to go in terms of, of your health. And no matter what, don't give up. Um, living a healthy lifestyle is a marathon, not a sprint. And you're committing to the long haul. And while it's not always easy, it's worth it. You're worth it. Let your team, your people know that you're making changes and that you want support and accountability. And accountability. I'm going to share a quote from the co-chair of the committee that provided those updated guidelines that I mentioned from 2019. And I think this really says it best. The biggest takeaway, so long as Americans make healthy decisions, the great majority of the time and stay mindful of the big picture, they can build cardiovascular health that's muscular enough to handle the rest. This really sums it up. Making good choices most of the time, making sure you're aware of where your health is and talking to your provider is really going to set you up to success around health if you're just making choices um, most of the time, the right choices most of the time. Perfection is not what we're looking for here. But so as important as it is to discuss nutrition and healthy eating and making better choices, um, it's equally important to understand the barriers in place that make those very recommendations and choices that I've been talking about now extremely difficult or impossible for some of our family members, our friends, our neighbors, and community members. So we are going to share this quick three minute video um, and then share an opportunity for everyone on, uh, on the call to support Minnesotans dealing with nutrition. Food security and nutrition security, they're related, but not identical. Food security means having enough food to live and not having to choose between eating enough and other needs like paying the rent or electric bill or going to the doctor. Nutrition security builds on food security it's about getting enough healthy food consistently to fuel the body for health and well-being. It is not only what you eat, but where to find it and how to prepare it. Poor nutrition can lead to poor health, even if a person has access to enough food or more food than they need. People who don't eat enough protective foods like vegetables, fruits, and whole grains are more susceptible to a range of serious concerns. In addition to heart disease, they have a higher risk of obesity, diabetes, and some forms of cancer. Kids and teens are more likely to have trouble in school. The effects are worse in some communities than others. Three times as many black households are food insecure compared to white households. Food insecurity negatively impacts food quality and variety. In low-income neighborhoods, it is often difficult to find the variety of nutritious foods needed to prepare healthy meals. We need to close those gaps so that everyone has the opportunity to live healthier. The American Heart Association is working hard to improve nutrition security because healthy food is the foundation for people to live their best lives. And every person deserves the opportunity for a full and healthy life. We're collaborating with health centers and community organizations on sustainable, evidence-based solutions. We're bridging systems to create a pathway for growth health, and well-being of people and communities. These efforts focus on the essentials for nutrition security, 
ensuring healthy foods are available and obtainable at an affordable price, and helping people have the resources to use those foods to eat a healthy diet. These efforts are sensitive to the culture, respecting what people value and how they live day to day in their families and communities. They include projects such as establishing food security screening in clinics and other community settings, combined with referral to readily available resources, developing tools to better screen for nutrition as well as food security risk, increasing community use of food assistance programs like WIC and SNAP, including ways to increase buying power for fresh produce, expanding locations and delivery services that provide healthy groceries and food deserts, Food deserts are neighborhoods where nutritious food is hard to find. Help us make healthy food available to everyone, everywhere in America. Our lives depend on it. Questions, if there are any, thank you really for taking the time to join us. Um, we will follow up with um, an email to all attendees, including the recording from today. We will have the video. Um, and then again, if you do want to participate in the food drive, please let me know and we will coordinate that as well. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat um, or you can always send an email and we'll bet, do our best to answer or follow up with an answer. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. I've added our email addresses to the chat. I know they were on screen earlier. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we'll stay on for a few more minutes and are happy to take questions. Um, very general questions, very specific questions. We can share resources and links, um, but really appreciate you, um, especially the women in our audience with all of the hats that you wear, taking a few minutes to spend time with us today to revisit um, your heart health, to you know, re reclaim your rhythm when it comes to cooking and exercise and all of those life's essential eight. So thank you so much to Sarah for deep diving into each of those. And we'll stay on for a few more minutes um, as anyone has questions. Great, thank you everyone.